equal to false so it'll be able to pick off pick up back at the point um, that it left off on and before we even do that we need to stop the song um, because you can't you can't travel to a different point in a song without first stopping it so you're gonna put in channel dot stop in parentheses now resave the movie test it and the song should start playing as soon as the movie's loaded and we should be able to go to different spots in it by clicking on the red line so if we want to go to the end of the song click towards the end of the line if you want to go back to the beginning go back to the beginning and we can pause it too just by clicking this blue circle uh, now the song has actually paused so what we can want to do is restart it from the point we left off on and click it again it should do exactly that now, of course, you're using circles and rectangles. In reality, you'd probably want to go a little bit fancier with it and have a, a, a moving playhead and, you know, have an actual pause button with a hover effect. But this is kind of just descri to describe the functionality and the logic behind the sound class and how it can be used, uh, you know, for a better user experience. Before we start talking about the ID3 information, I'm just going to go ahead and auto format. Let me select all of this and click auto format to get everything nice and neat. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and start creating the uh, functionality for returning information about the song artist, the song title, etc. So we're going to create a new function. We're going to call it ID3, all caps. And basically, we're not going to be passing in anything but return, avoid data type and we're going to add an event listener to the loaded sound object so sound.add event listener and then we'll do event.id3 so once all the song information has loaded the id3 information is loaded we want you to perform the function id3 handler beautiful you just go ahead and copy and paste that name so i don't have to type it again and we'll do public function id id3 handler and we'll be listening for an event of the event data type. Okay, and this will return void as well. And let me see here, push that down, go over one. Now we'll create an ID3 variable. Uh, so var ID3, it's gonna be equal to the ID3 info data type, or it's gonna be set to that data type, and it's gonna be equal to the ID3 information of the sound object. So set it equal to sound, dot id3 beautiful now before this id3 function can even run we need to have a place in our code that we can um, uh, fire it off at and let's do that in the sound play function right here so we'll do id3 right here so once the uh, movie has loaded the function will fire right after right after the right after the song is completely loaded now what we'll be doing down here with this id3 info variable or the id3 variable is taking information from it and putting it into a text field so we'll do that by doing my text field we'll go ahead and set the alignment to left so dot auto size equal to text field auto size auto size uh, dot left okay and then let me see here what are we going to want to do let's give it a border so my text field dot border equal to true perfect so now we've got most of the formatting done but let's go ahead and pass it a string so we know that the actual information has been loaded and we'll do that by doing my text field is dot append text we'll use the append text method to add text to it and we'll put received ID3 info new line excellent now we're gonna be using this append text method quite a bit so let me go ahead and copy and paste that portion go down a new line and then just create three separate lines perfect now what we want to do is use various portions of the ID3 info returned uh, you know these can be from anything to artist song album name uh, year of creation etc we're gonna be using artists song title and album so let's start that off by doing another new line and attach to the new line right after that we'll add a string that says artist okay we'll do a space and then we'll do plus ID3 excuse me plus ID3 dot artist 
plus another new line. And that should actually return the name of the artist of the song from the mp3 that you've loaded into the song object, into the sound channel, etc. Uh, let me make sure I've got all that right. Ah, uh, that's an equal sign. It needs to be a plus. All right, perfect. Let me copy and paste this because that's a pain to write out. Put it in there. Put it in there. Now what we'll do is just change this to title. We'll change that to title. We'll change this to album. And we'll change this to album. And now last but not least, um, wait a minute, what have I done wrong? Album, not album, excuse me. All right, perfect. Last but not least, we need to add the actual text field to the stage. So go ahead and do that. Add child my text field. And now we should have all of our ID3 information on the actual stage. Okay, and we can go ahead and start testing the movie, but I have made a couple of mistakes really quick that I want to go over. So double click on ID3.title and change that to song name. Okay, and we're not going to be using the ID3 event. For whatever reason, I've been getting uh, duplicate text areas. We're going to actually change that to complete. And because I, you know, I'm not really worried about garbage collection this time around, I'm not going to remove a bunch of my event listeners, but I did find a way to kind of bypass things. We're going to take this ID3, uh, this ID3 function, and place it before sound.addEventListener. I um, wanted this to be kind of quicker than it has been, and I'm not going to worry too much about you know removing all of the events and unneeded variables and everything like that. That's not that's beyond the scope of this uh, this tutorial. So this is just the kind of the quick way of doing things, not necessarily the best way. So now we're going to go ahead and save our document. Uh, make sure you changed all of those things: song name, changed uh, event.id3 to complete, and then put id3 before uh, the addition of the event listener to the sound object. That way it doesn't go in twice. Now when we test the movie, we should only get one set of information. Artist, title, album. The song starts playing. You want it to stop, you press pause. You want it to start playing again, press the button again. If you want to go to different portions of the song, you can click on this little red bar to go to the end of the song. Click on the end to go to the beginning of the song. Click at the beginning. And there you have it. That's pretty much it. There's one other thing I wanted to go over really quick. Now, assuming you only wanted a song to loop or loop a certain amount of times, most of that's going to be done within the play method. Uh, you would have to, you'd have to let it know the point in the song you'd want it to start at. For for most of us, that's going to be zero if we wanted to start at the beginning. And then the second argument is going to be the number of times it loops. Uh, it accepts an integer. Uh, by default, it doesn't loop any. What we're going to do though is set it to 40. And now if we were to go ahead and test the movie, the song would play 40 times over and over and over again. So that concludes this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section. I'll try to answer them the best I can. I apologize for a few of the mistakes I've made throughout this tutorial. Listening back, I know that there was a couple things I said that were not true, um, especially regarding the uh, text field and the error handling. But if you have any questions, let me know. I've enjoyed this, and I hope you can use the information found in this tutorial to help you. Thanks.